you know, it, it, it's been, you know, again, tremendous for my career and what it has done for me in terms of, you know, publicity when uh, I've gotten contacted from, from many, you know, state publications and I've gotten media attention because of exhibits at their work. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll just slam this ball down in the middle of the wheel and uh, the first step is going to be to get it centered. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on here. I'm going to press down on the clay. Yeah, with Jim um, at the Gallery and Museum, all works are generally for sale. I mean, you may have a couple pieces that were not for sale or, or, or purchased previously or belong to another collector or something that you can show, but uh, largely, you know, my work is for sale there. And, and oftentimes within, you know, the after the opening weekend, he might have sold a, a half of the works in an exhibit. So um, we've certainly had, you know, good luck. Working with Jim and the Rourke Art Gallery Museum has been a tremendous benefit to my career, there's no doubt about it. Um, this year we will be, this upcoming fall, we'll be putting, installing our 10th uh, annual show. So for 10 years in a row I've worked with Jim and, uh, and again sometimes at the gallery and sometimes at the museum. But what it does for you is it adds a certain amount of validity and credibility to what you do and it certainly pushes you. I, you know, I have to be developing a new body of work and I can't be showing the same things over and over. I don't know if people really understand the incredible impact that Jim has had on, on the art scene in the entire region. You know, having initially worked with the Plains Art Museum and then the Rourke over the past many decades, um, he, he's li literally been the person who has jump-started and given opportunities to many artists who certainly, you know, needed it. Some of the artists, I suppose, uh, that we've exhibited over the years obviously are much more important now. You know, you, you know obviously you're, in your, you're trying to exhibit the, the finest artists that live in the Fargo-Moorhead area particularly and then the Red River Valley and then we move out to western Minnesota and North Dakota, sort of our general area where most of our members come from and also where the artists that have one person shows here. I put down some of these shapes on these um, panels, glue them down, and then um, usually paint them a single color. And then I begin adding colors one layer at a time. What he's done, really, is he's developed a following uh, of people who are really committed to that museum. Um, people who, uh, who donate their time, donate money, donate energy. It's tremendously important. What's, what's that expression about selling, uh, somebody said this about selling books, you, you, throw, you throw them at the wall and see what sticks. And he sort of throws the artist at the wall and sees, sees what sticks. I mean, and Brad is an example of somebody whose work he can sell. Once you get somebody whose work you can sell, you show them once a year, you know, indefinitely. Uh, but in between that, he'll take a chance on artists who uh, may have a big reputation, may have no reputation at all. We uh, have a strong commitment to uh, artists of our time and place. We've done this from the day we opened. I think that museums are sort of a, doing a disservice to their artists in their own community if they do not exhibit their work. Production funding is provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota, and by the members of Prairie Public.